when I wasn't uh, Good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, January 21st, uh, 2020 uh, Board of Selectmen's meeting. Uh, I'll read the agenda. Uh, 7 o'clock, we have citizens input. 7.05, we have a public hearing. The Caldwell Management, Inc. doing business as uh, the Renaissance Hotel at Patriot's Place and the Hilton Garden Inn at Patriot's Place. Uh, alteration of premises. Uh, 710 uh, CBS scene, Patriot Place LLC, doing business as CBS Sporting Club and Big Night Ventures, Foxborough LLC, uh, doing business as the Scorpion Bar Mexican Tantina, application for a change of manager. Uh, 715 uh, uh, fiscal year 21 budget presentation, 735 selectmen's update, 745 town manager's update, 755 assistant town manager's update. <coughs> Uh, and then we'll have a few action items. Uh, Ed, you want to lead us in the uh, pledge? I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. <coughs> uh, anyone here for uh, citizens' input? Uh, no one's here. We gotta wait a couple of minutes. We sh we have to wait till 7:05 for the uh, uh, public hearing. Um, wait the five minutes. Or you could if you want. Yeah, well, you, you could just go and do do a couple uh, of action. the uh, a action, items. action items. A few action yeah, items. Kill a couple of minutes uh, till 7:05. All right. Uh, uh, so we'll do uh, start with some action items. All right. Uh, motion to accept a gift donation. For $240 for Tai Chi classes for the months of November and December by the Friends of Foxborough Seniors. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion to approve a two day entertainment license for Motorcycles of Manchester, Inc. on 12520 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and on 12620 from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <clears throat> Motion to approve a three-day entertainment license for Motorcycles of Manchester, Inc. for January 24th, January 25th, and January 26th in 2020. Second. Any further discussion? Yeah, is that an actual entertainment license or a one-day wine and malt license? Yeah, I think this is yeah, the second. a typo in the motion. <laughs> yeah, because the, if you open up yes, the document, it's wine and malt. So it's not another it entertainment is. license. That is a typo. So the three-day should be a malt. Yeah, I, yeah. Because you need another day to, uh, to get the alcohol and bring it back. It has so three days. Right, right, correct. All right, so um, we're going to, uh, un under correction, we'll make it a uh, three day um, <coughs> wine and malt. Wine and malt. Wine and malt. <coughs> license. Malt. License. You want to, uh, got that, Ed? You want to reread that? Um, so going back to. It, it'll be the three day. Okay. Motion to approve a three-day wine and malt yep. alcoholic beverage license for Motorcycles of Manchester, Inc. for January 24th, January 25th, and January 26, 2020. Second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> no. Yep. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion to approve tuition reimbursement for Sergeant Ken Fitzgerald in the amount of $1,849.50. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Motion to approve a tuition reimbursement for Officer Charles Gallagher in the amount of $4,605. Second. For tuition reimbursement. For tuition reimbursement. Yeah. Um, Still second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, that's perfect. We'll go back to uh, the public hearing. Uh, the Board of Selectmen 
from the town of Foxborough acting as the local licensing authority pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 138 will conduct a public hearing on Tuesday, January 21st, 2020 at 7.05 p.m. in the gala meeting room, <coughs> Town Hall, South Street, Foxborough, Mass on an application for an alteration of premises of an annual all alcohol holic beverages hotel innkeeper license for Colwyn <coughs> Management Inc. doing business as Renaissance Hotel at Patriot Place and Hilton Garden Inn at Patriot Place located at 27 and 28 Patriot Place, Foxborough, Mass. The manager of Socrates, Maximiliano Ramirez. All interested persons are invited to attend the hearing. Gentlemen, come on up. Thank you. Please introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about the plan. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is John Aida of the firm McDermott Quilty Miller, 28 State Street in Boston. Uh, this is uh, Socrates Ramirez. He's the general manager of the hotel, and he's also the uh, manager of record on the liquor license. Uh, just by way of housekeeping, I do have the affidavit of notice uh, mailing to the abutters along with the uh, return green cards. Can I submit that? So this is um, <clears throat> this is an application for an alteration um, specific to the Renaissance Hotel. Um, it is really just interior changes. It's really on the first floor only. It's uh, layout changes. So um, there's not going to be any structural changes or, or anything like that. So what really is happening, and, and Socrates can confirm that if I misspeak, is um, some of the conference room ballrooms, they're slightly changing configurations and square footage. Um, some interior <coughs> walls are, are shifting just to accommodate. I think there's an additional conference room or a combination of two went to. Correct. So uh, there was a conference room ad adjacent to one of the ballrooms. That conference room became part of the ballroom. And then uh, one of our conference rooms was adjacent to an office, and that office had, was consumed by that uh, conference room. But the square footage and, and everything pretty much stays the same. Mm -hmm. It's just the configuration of the rooms. Okay. And any time there's an alteration or change, we are required to come in front of the board and right. as well as the state as well. So we are trying to stay in compliance with that. Good. Um, this is a uh, public hearing. Anyone from the uh, public uh, want to speak on this issue? Hearing none. Oh. Dave? <laughs> Just um, it, going through the, the application, it was a little unclear what you were doing uh, on the plans, and there was nothing in the description. So the um, description has changed from the last description. So um, in the description that you provided, it didn't, it didn't spell out what the changes were. You may have listed square footages, but it looked like it was it was matching the existing. Not that it not that it matters because you still need to pull plans, uh, pull the building permit and everything else. My only question is, are, are you changing any egress? No. Uh, path, all, uh, paths of egress. Correct. Everything stays the same. Okay. So what we, yeah, and just for clarification, what we submitted for the description would be the new description. So I know it's a very large paragraph. Um, I guess we could have tried to highlight the to and from. from yeah, the it just, last approved. It yeah, just would have been you know existing uh, proposed. So not a big deal. No worries. That's all I had. Anybody else from the board? Yeah, just for the record, I went up there yesterday and met with Socrates and kind of because I too was a little bit confused from. The plans and, and stuff so he kind of walked me through and um i mean it's still the same square footage you know they just made better use of the space so percent for it so. Okay. thank you um i agree though what david said reading what we provided and it was clear as mud on what was going on up there so <laughs> I'll, I'll blame the project manager on that for the description <laughs> <laughs> all right Accept the motion to close the public hearing. Uh, make a motion to <coughs> close the public hearing. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion to approve the application from Colwyn Management Inc. doing business as Renaissance Hotel at Patriot Place and Hilton Garden Inn at Patriot Place for an alteration of a licensed premises as proposed. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you Great. very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you very much All for right, your time. Thanks, guys. All right, uh, 710, uh, 
uh, CBS Scene, Patriots Place, LLC, um, doing business as CBS Sporting Club and Big Night uh, Venues, Foxborough, LLC, doing business as the Scorpion Bar and Mexican Cantina, uh, application for change manager. <clears throat> Come on up, introduce yourself. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Michael Lizitza. I am the uh, regional manager for uh, CBS uh, Sporting Club and uh, uh, Scorpion Bar. Tell us a little bit about, uh, are you going to, um, the change of manager? Correct, yes. Uh, I've been with a company of Big Night Entertainment for a year now. Uh, I just recently, about four months ago, moved up to Foxborough to take over the two venues. So I oversee both venues now. Any questions from the uh, board? Mm -hmm. uh, could you give us just a little description, sir, of your background in the industry? Absolutely. I have a hospitality degree, a beverage degree from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, I've been in the hospitality industry for the last uh, what, uh, 19 years. Uh, I've managed anywhere from nightclubs to restaurants from New York City, Chicago, the Bahamas, uh, Connecticut. Uh, before I came to Foxborough, I managed one of our venues in Connecticut as Shrine Nightclub. So I have a background in all nightclubs restaurants. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Anybody else? No. Application was in line. Uh, okay. Motion to approve the change of manager for CBS Scene Patriot Place, LLC, DBA, CBS Sporting Club from Christopher Klein to Michael Lazista. Lazitza. Lazitza. Thank you. You had to make it hard, right? <laughs> <laughs> you had to make it hard, right? That's okay. <laughs> Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Good luck. Welcome to Foxborough. Oh, there's two. Uh, and now for the yeah. second one. Oh, that's right. We'll uh, to motion to approve a change of manager for Big Night Venues, Foxborough, LLC, DBA, the Scorpion Bar and Mexican Cantina from Christopher Klein to Michael Lazitza. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Again, welcome to Fox Road. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yes, we are. Bill, you're up. Okay. bigger font version than this. <laughs> we'll make sure you wear your glasses to see this. It's conserving our paper. <laughs> Trying to. Technology works. Um, so, I want to start this off by saying that we met here probably about a month ago, uh, where we talked about what we wanted to try and achieve and where we wanted to go with the budget to um, to make sure that we were staying within a reasonable growth in terms of our ability to pay. And. Um, the consensus opinion was that we would try and do stay around three and a half percent. We're going to see tonight that we we got very close to that number, with one exception, or one or two exceptions. One was the fact that operationally, on the town side of the budget, we actually came in at 2.74, which is impressive, considering that's all the town side of the budget was, includes fire, police, public works, operation, administration, all that was included, came in at 2.74. The school side came in at higher, at about 3.82, but I'm not overly concerned by that number because they were, they were challenged this year by a number of special ed, and that really drove that number up. So I, I would dare say that that's more of an artificial increase, per se. If you take out a couple of those costs, I think it actually the number comes down right in line to what we were, we were trying to shoot for. Um, I think what's, uh, what's also significant, though, is that 
the, the debt service that we are incurring this year, which we planned for, and we here should be surprised to hear this, that was for the borough school, paid for within the levy, is driving, driving that number up north of that number. So, but the good news is that we have a plan to pay for it that's not going to affect the tax levy in the process. So I think that should be good news to anybody who's watching this and listening to this tonight, that we did have a plan to do that, we, and we're going to stick by that plan, and we're, and we're doing that with this, with this presentation tonight. So let's get into it. Um, all right, so the town manager's recommended general government budget is up by 4.12% overall. That includes everything from, on the general government side. Not the operation, not just the operation, but everything on the, on the general government side. Public safety is up 12% overall. Uh, it make, makes up 12% of the budget, by the way. Not, not up by 12%. I, I apologize. General government makes up 4.12% of the total mm -hmm. expenditures. Public safety makes up 12%. Education, 40, 44, almost 45%. Uh, public works, 12.9, almost 13%. Human services, 1.3 culture and recreation, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the total, if it's as displayed in the, in the pie uh, depiction here, obviously you can see that education is a major piece, which is consistent with what the town values overall. I mean, we've talked about how important education is to the community and how, how people here move here because of the education system that we have and how valuable it is to people who live here in this community. So that 44% reflects the reflects increase the, of 3.8%? No, the 44% the 40, the oh, is the, of the, of the 85 okay. million, 40, right. 45 percent <laughs> of that cost is school-related costs. Bill, I'm glad you clarified that, because yeah. if those were the increased numbers, I was crumbling this up, <laughs> and I was going to say start they're not, over. They're not, they're not. I, I apologize. I, I, I started off the wrong, the wrong foot by saying this the wrong way. It's 45% it's of the total pie of what we're going to spend in the next year. All right. Was that percentage consistent with last year and the year before? Or is um, that that's a good question. It's, it doesn't go up that much. It, it's, it's, it's fractionally higher from the, last the year. The piece that, has, as Bill mentioned, that, that is going to go up would be the, the, the place which would be your debt service, where it yeah. the 1.1 extra million is going to be right. probably slightly higher than This is a good visual. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind seeing the same visual with last year's numbers and the year before for some comparison, if, we, if, if yeah, possible. If we, if we can do that, yeah. We should be able to do that. This, this reflects, by the way, it's, it's set up exactly the way your book, you know the book you take to the town meeting? Yeah. It cuts as that general government, public safety, education. Those are the UMass functions. It actually goes, it actually, if you take a look at the back of the book, you'll see that that same, same pie, pie chart is actually yeah. depicted. So it's probably in the, the warrant, mm -hmm. the warrant book itself. So as far as the uh, revenue side, um, nearly 60% of our revenues come from the tax dollar, uh, the, the general tax dollar, which is up by 2.5% this year. The new growth is uh, estimated to come in about uh, about not, almost a million dollars, nine and a half, nine, 950000 dollars, or one point one percent. Excluded debt. Uh, when that is not anything new. That's stuff that's been on the books for a number of years. High school, I believe, in the middle school, were were part were part of that equation, and uh, some small items beyond that. I think there were two pieces of the middle school, and maybe it was there something in there for public safety or this building. Uh, yeah, no, this building was not. There was nothing in this building. It was about five. It was about five, yeah. It was five things that, that were wrong there. That but it was the public safety building, I think, was a portion of that. And it was a few other further items as well. But, but those things of all, those are old. They're none of those, there's nothing new that we put on the books in the, in the past six years that I know of. And then um, the net state aid is, uh, is only an estimate at this point. But we, about 10% of our budget is made up of state aid. Uh, we won't have any indication of really what that number is till. We might hear something this week uh, uh, at the MMA conference if the governor is willing to address that issue. Uh, but he's at the very he's probably developing House One at this point now, which is the which is the annual <coughs> potential budget for next year, which then goes to the House and then goes to the Senate and and and, and the different gyrations that go on with that. There's different. It's probably about four or five four different, five different. For the versions of that. 
So the first version we'll see may come out as early as this week. Um, our uh, local receipts make up about 12.5% of that number, uh, which is um, rather significant and probably more so than many communities that you'll see. I mean, George will tell you that coming from East Bridgewater, that number is a pretty healthy number. And obviously, there's lots of reasons why that happens here. Ambulance receipts is also another healthy, healthy number, uh, enterprise and revolving allocations. What that number is, is, a, is the number that we allocate back from water and sewer and from um, uh, the, very, the, the, the accounts that we were able to take down, take from because they, 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 they pay out of, uh, they pay direct fees into the system. So we don't, they're not tax dollars, they, they come out of the fees such as the water rates and the sewer rates. Um, <clears throat> and and uh, I think there's even some money in there from the, uh, from, the from recreation yes. as well, recreation. So ambulance receipts operating is, is another good number. We get uh, about a little, about almost a one and a half percent of our, our budget now is supported by ambulance receipts. Um, this budget actually reflects a, a little bit of an increase in that number this year. And we'll talk about why that's going to be the case because we, we have an opportunity here to, to actually increase that revenue rather significantly over the next few years based upon what we're propose, proposing operationally. Water and sewer receipts, uh, that makes up about 10% of the number. And uh, uh, obviously, that's not part of the levy. Uh, that's all comes through, through direct, direct charge. Water and sewer is billed out separately. And to support the the, free, uh, the, uh, the the debt service and the and, and the uh, debt service on the town side of the budget, which is the borough school, it goes up about 1.1 million dollars over the next year. So we're gonna we're gonna use overlay surplus and free cash to help offset that cost, that impact. So it's not gonna be an impact on the tax levy by doing that. <coughs> you, you one would ask, is that sustainable? It is because <coughs> for, for two reasons. One is the fact that we actually increase our, our our overlay surplus by a certain amount each year. And we also under, underestimate our, 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 our local receipts purposely to, re, to recharge our free cash each year. And it's important to note that some bills actually that came in late this year or some revenue sources came in late should give us a pretty healthy number for next year as it is. So we should be in pretty good shape when that, when that, when that number comes up. So here's the, the town's operating budget and you can see that we came in uh, better than what we asked for, which was uh, operating, we came in at 2.74% at increase uh, overall on the town operation. The school budget again was 3.82. Fixed cost is is up to eight by 8.4%, 8 but that number is mostly the debt service cost. Most of that is like 1.1 million dollars of his debt service cost. Interesting to note that our pension costs actually went down this year compared to in terms of in terms of the amount that we were expecting. We're expecting about a 10% increase, which we've been paying for the past three to four years. The actual number came down to about 7% this year, a little over 7%, which is good news for us. Part of that, I think, is <clears> just a good investment, investment uh, climate, as well as the fact that we actually offloaded about nine positions out of dispatch into, in, in, and sent them to the, to the district now. So they're paying that, that, they're paying that freight on, on a separate, separate note altogether. And when we get charged back on the CEMIC on a separate fee, but you'll see that number is actually going down as well. So that's a good news story to talk about a little bit later. Bill, uh, maybe this is a question for George. Sure. Can you pull out the, um, the debt service out of the fixed costs yeah. and keep well, that as a separate line item? We're going to show, we're gonna show you. Yeah, yeah, it, it, we're going to show you how that works. Okay. We're going to show you how that works. So the, the water and sewer enterprise budget is up rather dramatically too, 16.2%, but that's also about seven or $800,000 of debt service for the new water treatment facility. So again, this is all debt driven this year. There's about almost $2 million of, of debt service that's figured out, figured as part of this budget, that is being paid for as, as we planned uh, through the, uh, for the borough school as well as the, the, uh, for the water rates. The water rates reflect that, that anticipated increase and, is, and has, been, uh, has been calculated into it. So if you take a look, here's the, here's the numbers now, obviously you go blind reading this, obviously, but, but the, the reason why I wanted to do that was to show you that, you know, if you take a look at where we, where we came from over, overall, our number is, is not really up significantly on any part of this budget in terms of the, the town side of operations. So what's interesting to note is that I want to take a, talk, tell you a little bit about some of the things that I did support in this budget, and, and there are some part-time <clears throat> positions that are supported here, and even 
two full-time positions that I support in, in the school and in, in the town side of the budget. One's being paid for through the fire, uh, fire ambulance receipts, and, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll explain that in a second. I'll let Mike speak about that a little bit later uh, after I finish. But what they needed was one more firefighter so they could add a, add a third ambulance. And last year we lost over 100 calls, to, and we lost them to other communities because we didn't have enough ambulances to put out to, in order to cover that, make those covers, co make that coverage. The other thing that's important to note is that there is added facilities now up at Patriot Place, medical facilities, which in which they provide an, on, an, uh, an ambulance around the clock, which we can then provide that coverage for them without having them station one up there permanently. It's privately done as opposed to us. We could actually make the coverage available to us. If we just were able to, to run one run a day, which is typically what, what is run up there, and sometimes two, um, the cost of that alone would, would more than cover the cost for the, of the new firefighter as well as the cost of the vehicle as well. So we're, we're anticipating that to be actually a, a net positive revenue s situation for us. And Michael, again, will, will speak to that a little bit more, more, more detailed when I get finished with this. As far as the, the only other full-time position I supported was, mm -hmm. was for a mechanic. And that mechanic has been needed for many, many years um, to, to, to support our fleet to, maintain, to make sure it's being maintained on a regular, regular basis. The reason why I, I thought it was important to do it this year is because as we, we keep noticing that the cost of sending stuff out is more expensive. So we're better to do, do the work inside, in-house and have it maintained here. We, can then, we think we can maintain by sta stationing a person up at fire and police just to maintain public safety vehicles by doing this as well. So is that new? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. That new position, proposed mechanic position, is it for the highway department or DPW or? It'll be assigned to public works, but they'll be stationed up at, up at public safety. So they'll, they'll actually, so in case they need a person, they, they actually have the facilities up at public safety to maintain those vehicles. But the person will be available to us if they run short down at public works. So we could actually send the person back down to public works. So the person will be assigned out of there to go to, uh, go to, go to public safety. Bill, did you get a chance to um, research what the cost of sending a lot of that stuff out was due to the fact we didn't have an extra? Uh... I actually spoke to, the, to the, the, super, uh, the supervising mechanic, and he said we can spend upwards of around one hundred and fifty to $200,000 a year sending the, the, the stuff out. So again, having this again, extra full-time position is going to be net positive. It should be it's net positive. Save the town it should be able to save some money, that's right. So school uh, increases I talked about earlier, it's up 3.82%. Again, I'm not concerned about that number. I, I actually think that in many respects, they were, that number was actually projected to come in higher than that. I think it was about 4.2% 4, 4 initially, and they were able to get it down because they were able to trim some of that cost. I think some of the impacts of that were reduced, um, and so that actually helped bring down that number to, to a more manageable number of 3.82. Interesting to no note as well, if even um, if you take that number, the school operating budget and the and the town operating budget together, the town's budget is up 3.46 percent. So that's the operation side is only up 3.46 percent. So it's actually, again, within the guideline that we that we established. And, and just as a side note, sorry, George. No, just the fact that I think the school uh, uh, department, uh, Dr. Burdos and certainly Bill Yuka did a great job right. to try to bring down. Yeah. Uh, that cost to, uh, you know, with, with the mandate, you know, from us up that to try to keep it at 3.5 percent. Yeah, the, the effort was clearly made. It was no, yeah. it wasn't like they were trying to uh, to undermine the efforts here. I mean, I have to say that uh, based upon what they did, and, and Bill and I talked a couple times about how to how to work that number, but he ultimately came back to me and said, you know, we were able to trim it back a little bit. So uh, I was a little nervous when it first came out because it was, it was a bigger number than I expected, expected to see, because they've been usually pretty good about bringing the numbers in online. Yeah, they did a great so job. They, they were able to get it there. So let's take a look at this. This slide's interesting because it actually sort of cycles out and shows you the, 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 the debt service. So, um, and I'll, I will even back it out at the end to show you how much of an impact it actually is. So if you take a look at the Southeastern Regional School, that's only an estimate of 7.5%, of that's been the estimate for the past few years, it's gone up that much. But in the reality, it's a $35,000 number. It's not a huge number, it's a $35,000 number, but it's still a big number and we we'll obviously want to keep pay close attention to that. The debt service principle in, in principle 
is it nets out to be about 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 nine hundred thousand dollars there, but there's there's other costs associated with it. So there's stuff that's rolling off. So it's the net impact is is this amount right here, which is the um, which is about nine hundred thousand dollars. Debt service expense is maintained at the same level, so there's no increase. The pensions I noticed I noted it's up about seven percent, seven point oh six percent this year, and that number is already given to us by by the Norfolk County Retirement System, so we know that's what the number is. Um, the unemployment compensation, we're not expecting any, any bigger claims to, to any major layoffs. We had one this past year, but it, was, it only was limited to like three or four people, and those should be rolling off this upcoming fiscal year anyway, so we, we should see some maybe some relief in that area. Group insurance benefits, I noted, are up 3%. Um, I've gotten an indication of that number, and I'll have further confirmation of it this week. But a preliminary indication was uh, is going to be uh, at three percent. It may even come down a little bit further than that, which is pretty significant when you think about what healthcare costs are running out of control for, for the past several years. We made some changes in our plan. We drove the number down a little bit, and this year it's staying down, which is a good good indication. It's a good indicator. Risk management is uh, is up about three percent, three point four percent. That's only an estimate at this point. Um, I won't have any indication of that to probably February or March uh, as to what that number really is, but it, that's, that's what's coming out. Stabilization fund is, is a net number that we're using again for this, that we're going to contribute again to the stabilization fund because we are policy, financial policy said so we have to maintain a certain amount to maintain, um, to maintain consistency with our policy and the stabilization fund. And uh, we also put more money into that. You recall, everybody recall, we put some more money into that in the fall. We put $250,000 into that to boost that number. So we add, we're continuing to add money into that account. So we're not, not looking away from that point. And the OPEB trust contribution is up a little bit this year, up 30, almost $36,000 uh, to 3.73%. And that's based on the actuarial study that was just recently done. Again, the, the water enterprise fund. If, if we, we we thought about actually breaking this down further, so maybe we will do that later on during the during the budget hearings. Is to is to uh, take a look at the uh, what the operating costs were versus what the borrowing costs. And I think the the, the borrowing costs are running about 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 nine hundred thousand or so of that. Marie, do you have that actual number? Did you were able to figure that out? I thought it was closer to a million. About a million, close to a million dollars. I can come back to it if you want, if you don't have it right there, but okay. But it's most of that is the, is the borrowing cost. The other thing that, that is affecting the cost this year is the is the everybody heard the, the term PFAS, which is a, a plastic element that's been being uh, evaluated through the various water systems throughout the entire Commonwealth and throughout the country. The DEP is, 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 has put this new regulation in place that says if, if it's a one pot per trillion, it has to be, or a certain 20 pots per trillion, and then you have to put additional testing in place. Fortunately for Fox Rose Water, it's actually below for the most part. There's one well that, that we don't use, that we use sparingly during, um, in the off season, in the, in the warm season, and we're testing it to make sure because it was on the borderline as to where it was. We're testing it to make sure. We think we can actually alleviate that impact. But we still have to do the testing. And the testing is not cheap. So we have to include that as part of the budget for this year. So, um, so if you look at the, if you, if you include everything in there, including the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the water and sewer funds and the, and the borrowing costs, everything is in there, it's, it comes in around five, uh, up about uh, 4.6 million, 4.7 million dollars. Um, which is about, uh, on, on a percentage basis, about 5.8. However, that's, it's a little misleading because if you take a look at the, at, the, at the costs minus the debt, water, and sewer increases, it comes in at 3.28%. Th so, so operationally, we're right there. We, th we said we would try and get that number to where it should be, uh, around 3.5%, and, and, we, and we're actually there. And, I, and, I, and it's, it's, it's perfectly legitimate to say that because the water and sewer are paid for by separate fees. They're not paid for by the tax dollars. And the, and the debt service for the borrowed school is being paid for by available funds 
uh, from both the, uh, 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 the uh, reserve, uh, overlay reserve, and, and, and the and, and, and overlay reserve no, and the and the free cash, free cash. And free cash. So that's one point one million dollars, which will offset that cost. So another way to break this down is you take a look at the, at the percentage of the cost of total budget increase. Water, sewer, debt service consumes almost forty five percent of the budget increase. Right, so that's a big number, obviously. Schools, 29.44, that doesn't surprise me. I mean, that's typically what it is year after year after year. It's, it's, a, it's a relatively high number because it, it's a bigger part of the budget overall. Pension health benefits are, up, are, are, the, are the other, and other costs, that, which includes the, the OPEB and, and, and things like that, are all in, the, are in that number, and that's up 13.58%. Oh, that takes the over, that's the percentage of the, of the total cost increase. And fire police DPW is 8.85% of the total cost increase. So does anybody understand what that means? I don't, want to, I don't want to confuse people by saying that. So if you take the total amount of increase and you break it down by percentage as to where the cost came from, that's, that's how it's being broken down, okay? Just want to be clear about that so I don't confuse anybody in terms of information. And in all other departments, 3.2%. So... The rest of the budget, there's really that's where the, there's no real impact on the rest of the budget. It's it's all coming from those those top three lines, um, actually really the top two lines for the most part. Seventy percent of the budget's being affected by those, those two lines. Not surprising. We all knew that this was going to happen because we're going to pay for the debt service within our own budget. But that but uh, but let's <coughs> well, let me put this another way. If we had gone for a debt exclusion, I would have had 1.1 million dollars of new money to spend on top of this. So we put downward pressure on the budget to stay within that line without spending that additional money. So we're being responsible here. I mean, anybody who says otherwise is just not telling the truth. But that's the way it's, that's the way it's portraying out. So um, that's it. It's a pretty simple process, quite honestly. And I'm actually very proud of the way the operating departments came in this year. And, 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 and the school department, and everybody who did their job in the water department, and they did whatever they had to do, obviously. But these were all planned improvements that we knew were coming. So not, there's no, no surprises in this budget. Again, the, 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 the only two full-time positions I supported were the fire, which was being supported by, by their own revenues, and the, and the mechanic, which I think uh, both chiefs will tell you was, is actually needed on, on all around for oper on the operating side. The, the other, there's a couple part-time positions that's included in this budget. 19-hour um, positions, not budget, not, not benefited positions. Um, a, it was a part-time um, youth, youth services librarian. The, the library made a very compelling case for that. Um, and um, and they, they did what they're trying to do, what they can to try and raise money to help to offset that. The other one is a, um, is a, is a, is a part-time position in the uh, Board of Health to, um, to help with, with the inspections. We have a lot more restaurants than we've ever had. And if we don't, we have to keep up with the restaurant inspection, otherwise that's a public safety issue that we have to address. And then finally, um, I think we added four more hours to inspectional services to us, to a, but that's still below, that's still not a full, not a benefited position. So, and we don't, and there was no plans to, to make it anything but that at this point. So, um, Mike, if you, if you would just maybe address the issue of the, of the firefighter, if you would, please. Yeah, yeah this one, this one, you can come on up. I'll definitely stand for us. Um, no, as we started to really analyze um, you know, our, our operation and then looking at going forward, um, last year we gave away about 100 ambulance runs that we weren't able to respond to, but most of those were between the hours of eight and six during the daytime. That's also the peak time for um, Partners Healthcare up at Patriot Place, which is it's a fairly um, high volume area. Even though they have an ambulance up there from a private entity that helps offset it, we still go up there about 180 times a year. We have the second building going online now. There's two floors open and we've been seeing an uptick in calls. So just looking down the, down the line, we wanted to try to figure out how to meet that demand but not have a huge impact to the budget. I think what we're going to do is try to staff um, during the day, during peak times, to try to meet that demand. And then after 6 o'clock, when we see a kind of a dip in call volume, you know, not, not have the staffing on staffs so we're not paying 24 hours a day. That way we're just trying to meet the demand 
when we have it. That's usually peak time during the week. So, how does that work with your shift changes? Uh, it would be it would be an addition. It would be so that the shift change is 24 hours. So it, that happens at uh, eight in the morning. But this would be a, a, a separate, almost shift, a day shift. So for the firefighter, that would be hiring. So just going to augment that. It's actually it's just it's good business to do this. It's going to generate a lot of revenue. Yeah, yeah, and it's going to provide a better service, I think, because we'll have the... And better service for the community yeah. in that respect, too. The offset, too, was, was we got, uh, the, the, the chief's uh, ambulance, how much he's putting in by the amount of the position. Of the position. So we're getting the money in to cover it. How are we paying for the new ambulance? Same thing, the uh, ambulance receipts. The ambulance receipts. Yeah. So that's the other thing, too. If we ordered it July 2nd, it would still take yeah. about a almost a year to build right so so just looking down the pike if we if we decided to you know do this and then we ordered it july july 2nd or 3rd it still takes you know 9 10 11 months sometimes depending on the demand so so we wouldn't have it till late spring early summer next year if so it, it probably won't even hit the 2021 budget fully it might not yeah we have a we have a mechanical spare that we keep mm -hmm. it's a 2012 um so we could look to start running that but it's it's uh it's a mechanical spare for a reason <laughs> so but, you, there, but there was a third one we have a third out third yes one. yeah but we would we would we would keep that we would want to keep that as a mechanical right. spare it's a backup but when they're they're, pr life, they're yeah. yeah they're pretty rough at the end of their at the end of their lifespan you know they high volume high mileage so they get they get uh they get run pretty good by the we definitely get our money out of them by the time we, we go to turn them in Good thing we'll have the new mechanic. <laughs> the question on the hours, you said you would have this firefighter on peak hours, so is this one firefighter only working 8 to 6, or is this...? Uh, yeah, it would probably be... Yeah, we'd have to really analyze the... I'd really want to kind of dial it in as to what exactly 9 to 5, 8.30 to, you know, 8.30 to 4.30. They, under the contract, they're covered by a 42-hour work week, so we would have to figure out the 42 hours, but yeah be Monday through Friday at some eight and a half hour day. Okay. I think what's, what's interesting is that we, we actually offloaded 100, 100 calls last year alone to the community. So then we lost all that revenue because it was handled by other towns by not having enough capacity within our own department to handle that. Is that consistent year over year? Or is it? Yeah, you, so yeah, it ebbs and flows, but as, as our run volume increases, so you know, you look at it, it, it it incrementally goes up every year, but you can see, like, so as, a, as we're planning for the future, you know, that that 100 might be 130 in, in two years. Yeah. So that's the thing. So we're laying the foundation now to, to try to keep that demand. But I really, you know, with all the data we have, we're really dialing in exactly, you know, where the calls are, what time, you know, what day of the week. So we can really kind of throw resource, you know, the limited resources that we have at, that, at those peak times to meet that demand. And then we're all good on the ambulance. I had a question on the mechanic. Anybody else on the ambulance? <clears throat> Do you currently have a st uh, firefighter staff that does some of the light mechanic work? Yeah, we have. We do. We do have uh, some firefighter staff that do mechanic work. Yes. Is that going to stay if this position is approved, or is that going to go away? That would. Pr they would probably complement each other. Okay. So I, I think, especially, I, I think it would be it would be difficult to get somebody right out of the gate that's certified on pumps. So the guys that we have are certified to work on pumps and just the pretty intricate aerial apparatus. So yeah. I think that, it, you know, if they found somebody, we could probably over time get them up to speed, but I think there'll be a little bit of a learning curve initially. So one of the, we, we have two mechanics and one of them is you know, nearing 60 years old. So, you know, the, there's a mandatory 65 retirement in the fire service. So. Yeah. You have one way to go then, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do. <coughs> All right, thanks. Thank you. I, I have a question on the mechanic one, that, sure. actually. Sorry. Um, what are other towns doing? So I know it's like outside of the realm of summer, but where we're, where we're sharing calls and sharing apparatus and everything, is there any opportunity outside the box to kind of share some of that cost with some of these other towns that we're cooperating with? Or? We actually talked about that the other day. Mike came to me about that possibility. Um, 
the challenge we have right now is that when it, we don't have enough capacity within our own organization to handle our own calls, our own mechanic needs. So if we were able to add the additional person, maybe we can we can look at that. Yeah. Um, and I think and I think the reason I say that is because if once we catch up to where we're supposed to be, we might have the opportunity to actually pop to have other towns call us. Yeah, I, th I definitely think there's an opportunity for that. And I haven't had a chance to look into this, but do mo most other towns around us have their own in-house, or are they, you know, because I know the, the cost of the repair, but then there's also other overhead costs with pension <coughs> and benefits and everything else. So are other towns doing this in-house, or are we kind of doing it differently? There's a, there's a hodgepodge. So like Mansfield, a lot of the heavy repairs, is the, they have a brand new DPW facility. Most of their fire apparatus is repaired, I, and I believe the police are also. Um, rent them as a hybrid, they outsource a lot of their repairs and the, what the DPW in-house can't handle. Um, Westwood and Stoughton share a fire mechanic between the two departments. So other towns have done that so, kind yes. of sharing. Oh, absolutely, yeah, okay. yes, definitely. It's not. It's definitely not outside the room. And a lot of this, I'm sure, is preventative maintenance. Mm -hmm. as opposed yeah, there's, there's re, yeah, there's benchmarks. There's certain things you have to send yeah. Up, there's no question. Yeah. yeah, there's things you wouldn't want to take yeah. on the liability of, yeah. or it's so specialized, like some of the stuff we have is so specialized. Just your average maintenance, you know, the crews have to be, the oil's changing, the tires rotated, brakes and everything else have to be done on a very regular basis along with the fire trucks as well. So, but it's a good point. I'm glad you said that because we actually talked about it the other day. I, I said, I think one step at a time, you've got to make sure that you understand where you are handling all your equipment needs first, and then we can revisit that issue. So maybe that's a conversation we have next year. But um, just a lot of things along regional stuff, I, and I wanted to mention this to okay, you. you can nope. no, 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 you're also good. You can say that. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, <coughs> one, on the regional side, uh, this is actually a good news story. So, um, so regional dispatch um, is actually in a point where we are um, we're under construction for the new facility. They uh, they broke ground uh, this week uh, on that on the new facility. Actually, a little bit last week. Uh, they was getting the site ready and they're working on it now. The road has already been resurfaced, so so they actually can access the surf the area pretty well. Um, but what's happened is that um, the state has is starting to relook at this issue of how we how they fund these operations, and there's actually an interesting question that's before them right now, state 911 commission, which is actually scheduled to meet next week. And if they uh, and I don't want to I don't want to predict their hand here, but one of the things they're looking at is, is a way to which they can help help offset the, the, the startup costs for these operations. Because a lot of towns are finding it hard to start up with the, with the cost of existing operations plus the new operations. So what they're trying to do is find a way to offset those costs for the first three years. And if they can do that, your cost will be, will be run down rather significantly. So what that means for us, now that we're already started, is that it actually could help our costs and, and keep our costs down pretty low. Uh, now we're not going to. You know, I'm not going to predict what that number is going to be at this point because if they fund that, I'll be able to make a, an announcement about once that happens. But I'm not going to predict what they're going to happen at this point. But, but I will say that they are talking about that and is is, a, is an option that could be really good news for us if that happens. The other thing that's important too is the fact now that this facility will be open and we think it'll be open by late ne next summer. There's probably six to eight communities that are actually talking to us about joining. Did you say so next summer or this summer? This, this summer. I'm sorry. Thank you. We're already heading the next, really next year, 2020. This summer. And um, so we, we're at a point now where those communities, if they can come on, and, and it won't be that hard to take them on, that'll drive the cost down even further. So what's going to happen is that this regional cost that's in, in the service has been actually remarkable. But the way this is going to work is that it could be a very low-cost option and it could provide us really even improved, even improved service of what we have. So it's, it's turned out to be a very, very good story. Uh, we'll continue to, keep, continue to keep you posted, but, um, but right now the, the, I'm expecting that, that cost to, to level out. And it, I'm certainly not projecting an increase. In fact, I even took the money number down a little bit this year because our co the cost with the grant is actually going to drive the cost down a little bit this year. So it's actually a savings to the budget this year in terms of the overall cost. Um, the other thing that I want to mention, and I, I think it's important to note, that we we are going to be challenged by a capital plan this year. And, I, and I, I say that because there's not going to be a lot of extra free cash. I mean, we're going to maintain a certain free cash position. I don't want to go below that. 
if I can help it, because I think we want to maintain a certain buffer there. Um, but I, you know, we we, do, we have we have plenty of stabilization money. We've got, you know, we're not going to we're not challenged in any way, shape, or form. But but there's certainly a, a comfort level that I think we want to maintain. The second thing is that we just we we've, we've spent a lot of money on major capital improvements over the past few years. There are some things that we're not going to have a lot of extra money to spend on. We do have, we still have other water improvements that need to be made. So that, that's figured into the rate as well. So we have that coming up. And those things more or less pay for themselves. We've got another tank that we have to replace uh, as part of that whole process. Um, our roads are going to continue to be maintained because we get the money from the, from the meals tax. We, we get the chapter 90 money. We get the meals tax money. So we have, we've, we've anticipated all that as part of our revenues. So we know that's going to be there. Um, but as far as replacement of equipment, um, we, we're going to be in a position where we're going to have to take a really hard look this year to see what we can fund, what we can't fund. I mean, there are things that I'd love to be able to do, but um, I just don't know if I'm going to have the money to do it this year. And, I, and I'm being totally upfront about that by saying that right out of the gate. So we'll have to take a look when we get there and see if it, the situation improves. We don't even know what our state aid figure is. But conceivably, that number could go up this year. And if it does, we haven't figured that. We've, we're, we're figuring level funding from last year. Um, so we, we actually went down. We went down. Actually, below. We went below the number. So we're actually, we took a very conservative look at that. So we, we should be able to get some, number, some help on that. So that might move that number up. And that means whatever number we use, whatever new revenues come in or whatever costs go down, is offset by how much free cash we have to use in the budget which means that we could then use some of that free cash potentially to pay for some of the capital improvements. So while maintaining that certain comfort level, that's really important to do. So would, Other what, questions? Yeah. Um, what I'd like to see is a uh, spreadsheet that shows, based on our financial policies, where we are today and what we're going to recharge in 2021 through this budget to see where we're going to end up. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to see free cash continue to leak. I want to make sure we're either at today's level or we recharge it on the plus side. Yeah. Well, we, we, we actually anticipate that by doing the way we projected our revenues. Yeah, I know we, we so, talked yeah. about it earlier, yeah. but I, wanted, I just want to see it. You, yeah. did a, you did a nice spreadsheet prior to yeah. town meeting. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you can do the same I'll give thing. Give the same one that I gave you, I don't know what, a month or so ago when yeah. we, were, we were in here. Uh, <laughs> And pretty much everything was 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 hitting. Um, and yep. So the, I think the big question would be, right. how much do we leave in the tank for a recharge for the next year? That's right. that's the thing. Yeah, that's a, that's anticipated. So we know that that's part of that. And that was part of um, Randy Scollins' yep. forecasting capabilities to look at that. And we anticipated using free cash, and we anticipated using other revenue sources to offset this impact. Right. So again, we're not surprised by any of this. But I don't want people to think that we're spending beyond that because we're really not. This, this is a conservative budget in many ways. Any right. other questions from the board? Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Larry, I mean, Larry do you have any questions? You're good? Okay. Good. All seriousness, when we get stuff like this, is yeah. there a way to get it bigger? I mean, or electronically. Got, electronically. I can't. It's, just, it's, it's, too, yeah, it's too small. It is. In some way, you know, so. We can make it bigger. more detail on some of the other pages too. It just the challenge is trying. We're trying to keep certain things on one page, so it's yeah. You know, oh, I, we can I know. give it to you on a stick or something. Yeah, I mean, it's over the weekend. I, I mean, I maybe we'll have to go I to multiple find. pages to, to do it. Yeah. yeah, if there's any way. Yeah. Even if it's posted to board docs rather than a stick, like if the Excel files, then you can yeah. actually increase the yeah, the, the, yeah the whether view. we double monitors or whatever we're looking at it on. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thanks to George and Marie who yeah. were, in the, were in the midnight all to help me get this thing done, so I appreciate that. Nice PowerPoint. All right, uh, selectman's update. Um, but can I just say, make one other point? Uh, no. no just, <laughs> well, it's, it's really, it's, it's about the, this, this process, is that you need to come back in another two weeks and give us an indication as to where you are with this budget proposal. So we, we can talk about it next week, but I need to give my recommendations to the ADCOM from, this, from the board, too. So I, I just need to know if there's any particular issues you want to talk about further, 
Happy to do it. Happy to sit down with you. You want us just to talk to you sometime in the next two sure. weeks? Sure. You could. If you <laughs> could, if any one of you individuals want to call me and, and talk to me about what you want to present, I'd be happy to do that. I know you put a timeline together during that summit. Is there an updated version of that just for us to kind of get? So the, so the time, yeah, we have the timeline. We, we actually are on the timeline. We're actually right on the timeline right now. So, um, yeah, we've got the, uh, I don't have, we, yeah, we, no, we, we don't need it yeah. now. We don't need to review it now. But if we yeah. can just one more doing that yeah. review to kind of know what's coming. We might be off just by about, I think, <coughs> one meeting with the uh, recommendations to, to the AdCom, because I think we're supposed to get them by the end of the month. But, uh, but I think, the, but the good news about that, the AdCom is going to meet with the school committee first. So it's not going to be an issue. I, I think it's 29. You're going to meet with the, with, uh, the, the Sioux and Water Department, then the second okay. week, the February, whatever the fourth, fifth is. So Sioux and Water is, is their budget anyway, so that's the, so this board wouldn't make a recommendation Sewer on that. first, so. then school, and then I forgot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I know the last one is the public safety. Yeah. So, what, so it, wasn't, it wouldn't affect us if we were a little before two weeks. But with the um, turnover in Amanda's position, too, as much as we can have, I, I know like no one really owns like posting and the um, the adcom stuff. So yeah, it would be on the calendar if you thought to proactively look at it. But if we can post things and make sure their website's up to date and what's coming and send the newsletters on their agendas that are posting, I think it'll help. It would personally help me to to see what's coming. On yeah, their we, stuff and have it pushed to me rather than me have to go think and look okay. at it. So we have the schedule, right, for the uh, for the, the upcoming uh, schedule for the mm -hmm. ad comp. Mm -hmm. uh, we can get we can should be able to put, put a post out and get that up. So just like our agendas email out, you'll get like a kind of a reminder to know what's coming on and it would be pushed out and. Yeah. All right. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Selectman's update. I've got a number of things, but anybody else? Uh, yeah, I have uh, one quick thing. Um, I let you know earlier, I let Bill know, I just want to let the rest of the board know that uh, I will not be pulling papers for re-election. Um, as much as I enjoyed um, being on the board, there's certain things that go on in life that you just can't put the right amount of time into it. And, um, so I'm just going to finish out my term. And... Hopefully someone will step up, as they always do, and, you know, let things happen, let things fall where they may. So, but I just wanted you guys to hear from me versus, you know, is he going to run, is he not going to run, or, or any rumors or anything like that. So, this is it for me. Thank you. Oh, thanks thank you. for uh, everything you've done for the town, Dave. Appreciate it. Just want to say thank you as well. You've done a great job. Well, I'm not dead yet. That was the case. We're not putting out of any oh, benches we, or plaques. We're, we're not writing the obituary yet. So, <laughs> but, but just want to say thank you. We appreciate everything you've done. We appreciate it. That's right. <laughs> did, did your wife just say you're going on to the adcom? <laughs> <laughs> no. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for letting Thanks, us know. Right. The community know. Um, for those of you that. Um, uh, didn't know we had a passing this uh, uh, rather recently a uh, long time uh, uh, Superintendent of the Foxborough Water Department Warren McKay passed away I uh, just want to read a little bit about Warren Warren um, Those of us that knew him it was a great gentleman. Uh, he was a 47 year employee of the town uh, He was the uh, former superintendent of the Foxborough Water Department and he passed away January 8th at the age of 84 uh, Warren was a lifelong resident of Foxborough. Uh, he also proudly served his country in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, he was a former Boy Scout leader in Foxborough, as well as a lifetime member of the New England Water Works Association. Uh, his true passion was for his family, his late, late wife Barbara, his children Paul, Peter, and Scott, and uh, his special granddaughter, daughter Charlie. Uh, as important as family was to Warren, uh, he always kept Foxborough Water Department near and dear to his heart. He brought expertise to the water department and truly cared about serving the townspeople. Even in retirement, he kept in touch with the department, offering advice, warm conversation, and a wealth of knowledge. Uh, the town has lost an asset and, and a true friend. Um, I think uh, uh, one of the things that wasn't on the agenda that I think we, we might want to come full circle on a, a little bit is the vision statement. Um, I know there were a couple of <laughs> final vision statements that went around. Uh, it's good today. to see that, though. I, I thought uh, it was good. 
Uh, they were. They, I, I think all three were, were, were excellent. I think. Do we all have? A, I mean, I, I, I brought them. Should be. It's on your. It's on your board docs. Yeah. Yes. The three that. Yeah. All three of them on your board docs today. Yeah. Today yeah. and, you know, bottom line is as I mentioned to Bill, a lot of times it's just um, um, moving words around and you know whether you want it to look special or keep it simple. Um, you know, I think that the need for a vision statement uh, is, is, is warranted. Um, any thoughts on, on the three that came to us? Uh, just to throw it out there. Um, I, sir, I like the simplicity of the option two one. Um, but any, any other thoughts from the board members? No, I think, I think all, th all three were, were thoughtful. Yeah. Hit all the points and can go with either one. Either one is three. Either. Either no, one. No. Oh. <laughs> I already checked out. <laughs> I guess my thought is, I, and I said this to Bill, and I, I don't want to derail this at all, so I'm on board with any of these three, but my overarching feeling is that we should have a vision statement for the town, and then all of our boards should have a mission statement to execute that vision statement. So. But I think that's part of what we that's discussed That'll be part anyway. of the process, yeah, ultimately. Yeah, that will I think, be part but, of the process. But I think it's, it's sort of a yeah. global process, and then you, you, we whittled it down. But I think you're the chief operating, or the chief policy board for the town, so it's important that you really hit the highlights here, which you've done, and in your, in your, in, in all three of these versions has done that. So I think it's actually really well done. I'm thinking of like a vision statement is where you want to be, like, we strive for the best live? town in the state. Right, we aspire and to be. And then the mission right. statement is like how you're going to do it. Right. So I think that they should be, the goals, the vision statement and the mission statement should all kind of happen together rather than in tandem because I think that they all kind of intersect as my. And do we have the vision statement for the town? Like I think that's what's kind of first is a vision statement as a town and a community. Well, I think in order to do that though, you'd really have to get everybody to participate yeah. in that process. I mean, it's not a bad thought, yeah. I mean, but, but, you, but you need a bigger room to do that mm -hmm. conversation. Well, I think uh, the, the, at least for the vision statements, the three are, are excellent. Why don't we just do this? Why don't we, you know, over the next week, uh, rate these one, two, and three, uh, send them yeah. into Bill. You'll tabulate them. Yep. See what the final number is, and, and the winner is exactly. <laughs> yeah. Does that sound like a good mm -hmm. idea? Yeah. Well, we could do it at the table too. I mean, we could just. Vote. Is there any reason we can't do that rather uh, than sending secret polls? Uh, none. Oh, I, I, and, and I don't mean secret by any <laughs> no, means. No, but it just I seems just like that's something we could probably do at the table. We all, like on a future agenda, but I mean, we, I mean I'm cool with any of these, but. Yeah. I don't care. You're, you're the chair. Yeah. Well, we, I mean, we could <laughs> certainly do it now. Um, did everybody have a chance to read through them well enough to, to have an idea of which one they, uh, they all like? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm good. All right. I'll, I'll go first. I like option two. We'll go vice chair. Um, so option three is the one that I put in. It's actually option. It's just one sentence from option two. <laughs> so <laughs> option two and three are just um, the exact same with one sentence cut being more, in my opinion, of a vision than a mission. So okay. option three. All right. I'll go. I thought option two. OK. And then the. I was option two. I'll go option two. I did option <laughs> one. Option two. Option two, wins. <laughs> option two. Awesome. Now there's no uh, super secret. Okay. All right. Want to read our? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's let, read, let, it. Read, read it. Uh, read it so everybody sees it. Yeah. The board of selectmen has a responsibility to the community by providing guidance and setting policy for the town. This is achieved by working with residents and business owners to establish and, and satisfy the needs of the community. The board endeavors to lead by example by seeking to constantly improve the quality of life, protect the town citizens, and invest <coughs> in facilities and services that will support the reasons uh, why people have chosen to live, work, and play in this community. Um, and just as a, a final note, uh, as we mentioned throughout the whole process, this is a living document. It can change. Uh, as the community changes, as, as the board changes, uh, as our management team changes. So, so, so uh, the, the going back to what Leah was, was attributing, was, was hinting around, was that once we take this document, we get the school committees, we get all the, diff, the major committees together, we take all those, and then we put them up on a board and we say, okay, where do, they, where do the lines intersect? 
and then we come up with one vision statement for everybody. So this is step one, yeah. right? And it's really important that you you agree where where you're at, and then we'll all we'll see where they're at. Okay. Great. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, Bill, where are we um, with the uh, plastic bag ban? I know we um, put it on a, a back burner, uh, wondering I, if I remember correctly what the state might do. Um, I think we're waiting to see what the state might do on this issue. I think we, we, held, we held off on that for that right. reason. A, a couple communities yeah. have adopted it, but. I thought that the gentleman, and I, I would have to go back and watch it because it's long on the memory, but I thought he said Mansfield may identify citizens' petition and he'd be happy to help yeah. someone through that process. I'm sure that we could even help someone through that process if they wanted to bring it forward. Um, there's been a couple people that are emailing us, so I think, and I'm not speaking for the board, but where our position may be to wait for the state. You know, it, that's not to say that someone couldn't bring this forward as a citizen's petition right. on their own or a group or a coalition or whatever so the uh we we may hear again this weekend we may hear some more about what the the mma is willing to do on that issue and maybe they, they could they respond, their their position is to sponsor help sponsor one for the state overall do you think it might come up this weekend it could it could very well because it you know there's a lot of environmental issues that could come up as part of the annual business meeting okay. did you get that email from that citizen too or was it just the board this week i didn't get one from no, anybody i think it was just the five of us. okay yeah, yeah. If you want to forward it to me, I'll have to take a look at it. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll forward it to you. Um, and then last one from, from my point of view. Um, one of the things we also discussed uh, um, was the, um, you know, the train discussion um, with the silent community. Or the, uh, any feedback from the other towns uh, yet on uh, how we, they we went got, about? We did, we got, the ones, all the ones I got, I think I forwarded to you and to the, and to the, and to the group okay. uh, so that they can take a look at that. There is... It was interesting to note that there are uh, areas where you can do a quiet zone, and it's actually, you can do sections within a town. You don't have to do the whole town. You can actually do a section of the rail line, where, and, and it's been done in other places. So it's not, the whole town doesn't have to be in that position. Okay. I think we should get, the subcommittee should get back together soon. Yeah, we should. It, it's been, well, it's, it was, you know, it happened right before Christmas, so we had a lot of. In the budget. Uh, in the budget, so we, we had a lot of, uh, but we did get quite a, bit, quite a bit of response back from Norfolk and a, and a few other towns. Um, Norwood uh, actually gave us some information, so, so there is some helpful information. The subcommittee, though? We didn't do that. We, we sort of did an ad hoc one. Uh, <clears throat> ad hoc. Uh, about six weeks ago, uh, two members from the community and. Bill, were you there too, Mike? I was not. No. no. And then uh, Jay Barrows, I think. Oh, Jay Barrows was, Jay Barrows was there. Barrows was right. there yeah. Not that you look like Jay, but yeah, I Jay, remember if you were there. Getting there. <laughs> but, um, uh, that's right. Jay, Jay was there. Um, so we'll, we'll meet again soon. Uh, yeah, they, they, um, they, were, they asked if we would try and find some information, which we did. Yeah. And so we, we we're trying to, and then we need to come up with an action plan as to what we need to do next. Okay. Um, that's all I have. Anybody else uh, like an update? Great. Bill? Okay, so um, just a, a couple <laughs> things to know. Um, you, I think you sort of alluded to it, Dave, with your, your comments that the, um, there is a, um, uh, the, the, all, the, all the ballots are open now so for, for election. So anybody who wants to pull paper, they can do that as of right now. And, um, and, so, and, and speak to the town clerk's office. They can help you with all the, the various positions that are open. Um, and uh, give you the latest information on, on you know, who's, uh, who, what position is. I think there's like 12 positions that are open overall, um, maybe 13 now, uh, as of tonight, I think. <laughs> so well, I, I, enc I encourage people to run. Yeah. It's uh, an extremely rewarding experience, um, and it's a way to give back to the community. So, Absolutely. So um, another thing, another uh, important thing, I, I did forward this to the board, uh, board members, um, Mark Craig, uh, director of the uh, uh, Human Services and, and Council on Aging, has come up with what is known as a Citizens Academy, and um, maybe we can uh, bring that up on the screen, uh, on your screen. I think we've is that part of the town manager's update. Where, where was that? Uh, we have it. Where was it? Is he going to put it up there? Or? Oh, here it comes. He's bringing it up now. Coming up now, so so um, Citizens Academy, while he's bringing it up, is um, is a a compilation of 
individuals who are really put together by the town, all the towns, department heads, to actually have a, 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 a session, actually a series of sessions, like six weeks, where people can actually, anybody from the public who wants to can go and actually learn about the individual operating departments. Um, a number of communities have done this to try and do two things. One, to educate the public on what we actually do. And two, is the, so, they, so they're ready for town meeting. And three is the fact that out of that group sometimes comes some, some really, really good candidates for positions to serve in town government. So all three are important aspects of what, what this is all about. And I give Mark a lot of credit for pulling, taking, and taking the initiative to do this. Um, all the departments have agreed to, to serve in, in a various capacity and, and to present at cer certain meetings as part of it. And it's gonna, we're hoping to start it as early as uh, March. And uh, so we, we'll be asking people to, uh, we'll be asking people to, you know, maybe it's the, uh, might be, might be the, uh, it might be uh, the screen inside the, uh, the, the office. Did you? Uh, I, got, I got it going out. You got it going out. Not okay. Sure. okay. <laughs> I haven't seen anything on the screen. That's interesting. I happen to see the item. I can uh, I can hold this up if you want. I'll hold it up for people if you want. Oh, well, it's going out. Okay, so it's, it's, on, it's going out. Okay. Oh, it is. Okay, so it's not showing up here. Okay. I happen to see it on Facebook tonight, and he's very impressed. Yeah. With especially in an era where people don't have uh, yeah, this is civics the, lessons per yeah. se in high school anymore. Uh, You're to right. learn more about town government, I right. think is essential so that we have interest generated in people stepping forward, you know, for different roles in their community. Right. I think it's a, I think it's a great thing. I, people that go to these academies find them to be extraordinarily informative. Um, and it's um, and not only it's an it's it's an ability for people to for our operating departments to connect with the public a little bit better, which is something we're striving to do anyways. But I think um, it's it's something that I think will actually benefit the community in many many ways. So th there are it's broken into six sections. Uh, segment session one is is, is the academy orientation and in, in, in government, um, and it's in se session two is administration, town clerk, and town meeting. So the third session is all about finance. Uh, session four is about public safety, police department, fire department, CEMREC. Uh, session five is public works and community development. And session six is board of health, council on aging, uh, human services, recreation, Boyden library, and veteran services. And, um, and also it will provide some historical perspective as well on the community during that session as well. So. There is lots of information that, that people can have about the community. I think if you have any interest at all about how Foxborough runs, because it's different in every town. Every town has its own different ways of doing things. Foxborough runs this way, and we we're happy to try and share that with people if people are interested in, in attending. And is Mark going to make a presentation to us? Uh, Mark is going to come to you at your next meeting and make a presentation to the board about it, so you'll be able to see it. If you can't see it tonight, if it's going out, that's fine. But um, if, it, if, you're, um, if you have an interest in this, certainly tune in at the next meeting. We'll he'll make a presentation about it. But it's, it's scheduled to start on March 10th and go run through April 28th, which is actually just before it ends, just before town meeting. So people will have quite a bit of information before, they, before the meeting. How long starts. is each session and is it during the day at it night? It happens at 7 o'clock at night and it'll probably run for like an hour and a half to two hours each night. Will it be here or uh, at the... Uh, It'll be here, I believe. There's different locations. So like one's at the senior center, one's here, one's at public safety. Oh. A couple are here. The nights that we have meetings here, yeah. they will be at different locations. Right. right. And, you know, I don't know how much, just something else to add to here, and I don't know where we even would, but maybe boards and committees. So how, you know, you have these people that are interested, so how can they get involved? Um, so maybe that's something that could, you know, be think, session one or whatever. I think that actually comes out as part of either of uh, session one or session two. We, we actually talk about a little bit of that. Okay. Yep. All right. And then um, I think that's it. Uh, just the, I, you heard me, um, you heard me say that the uh, meeting is, uh, is uh, the MMA meeting is going to start this week. It's going to be Friday and Saturday. 
of this week. I know Ed is planning on attending. I know that uh, it's hard to get everybody to, to attend, but you know, at the extent that you can get there for any portions of the meetings on any one day, uh, certainly is you'll find it. I'm sure you'll find it helpful. You'll see a lot of your own colleagues there. Uh, this is really the meeting for selectmen and, and staff members to go to to get updates on what's happening around the state and around the country. Uh, it's actually very informative, so I think you find it to be helpful. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Mike? Two questions I just thought of that came up when uh, Mark was presenting this to at the department head meeting. One was, is this open to folks from other communities? And the answer was, not really. It's, it's tailored to Foxborough. And the, the second question was, you know, could people pick and choose which nights they go and that was also a not really this is a the whole package you want to get the whole thing <clears throat> you know to understand the whole thing so if people aren't available for parts of it they probably ought to do it the next time it's it's offered but uh, mark when he comes to present we'll get into all those details but i just want to and why that's important yeah yeah um i just have um two quick things one is as your wrapping up or have wrapped up your vision statement um, I have a folder here that's full of most of the department's draft vision statements and they're still working on them they've been submitting them to Bill and I and they're, um, they're good and it's it's a lot of things that um, are obvious that the departments do but then there's some things that they you know often hadn't had a chance to really encapsulate them into a vision statement like you've done over the last several meetings the only other thing I have is that we are now um, actively pursuing our town engineer and our executive assistant. Those two job postings closed out yesterday, so we're into the uh, interview and, and, uh, and hiring stage on those. That's all I have. I think that's it then. Mm -hmm. that's Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everybody.